case, little Jade, to raise her for the Lord. And uh, so they're here before us, our church today, and it's their desire that uh, Jade would grow up and that she would serve the Lord with her life. It really come, stems from the book of First Samuel, if you remember Hannah. And she dedicated her son Samuel to the Lord and dedicated him to the temple. And it was her desire, I mean, her prayer was that that God would give her a child. She was barren for a while, and she had prayed that God would give her a child, and indeed the Lord answered that prayer. And so <clears throat> it's really where this all comes from. But let me read you the, this verse here, and I want you to think about this. as This family stands here uh, with their child, uh, and those of us who are parents uh, or have a home, think about this verse. It says in Psalm 127, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. The Bible says there, except the Lord build the house. And let's remember who is the designer of the home. The one who holds the blueprint of, home, of the home is God. He designed it. And because he designed it, he knows the purpose of it. And so let's be reminded of that, even for our own homes, church, that God is the designer of, uh, of the family and of the home. And therefore, he, he understands what are the needs of a home. And, and I'm so glad that he's given us instructions uh, in his word that we can know how to raise our children. You know, we didn't get a set of directions at the hospital when our children were born. You know, you, you didn't leave with a, with a child-rearing manual. It's not what they give at the hospital, but I'll tell you what, God has given us a manual, and it's his word. He's given us a guide, and we can follow it. Uh, let me also read in this, this same chapter. It says in verse 2, It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. And they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. This is such a wonderful passage. It just kind of gets our mind focused on the power, really, and the, and the importance of children. And the power in importance that we have, the, the, the role that we have in their lives as parents. And that's really why they're here. Their desire is to raise Jade for the Lord. And they want to have that part in directing her. Like it says here, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. If you could think of a, you know, an archer, he's got his arrow and he's got his bow and he's got a target. And the target for parents is to point your children to the Lord constantly pointing them to the Lord. And, of course, we do that with his word. We give direction and guidance to them. You know, we, we, and one of the ways that we can do that is by bringing them to church, bringing them to Sunday school. But listen, don't let it end there. In fact, what's going on in your home is far more important than what's going on here at church. Because our children... Uh, they see us day in and day out, and they know they're not, when they grow up, they know we're not perfect. But listen, don't, don't let your home be a different place. Uh, in other words, than what's going on here at church. Don't be a different person at home than you are at church. Uh, that can be such a detriment to children. You know, Ephesians talks about fathers provoking your children to wrath. And one of the ways that you can do that is by being inconsistent. I've seen it over and over where, you know, we're different people here at church than we are at home, and kids see that. Let's give them something real, amen? Let's give them uh, something authentic that we can pass on to them. And by the way, uh, Pastor Miller and Sister Rachel, I know you've, you've been up here already three times, and this is your, your fourth time, and uh, God has blessed your family. Um, the Bible says, happy is the man whose quiver is full. And I guess a quiver is five. That's what a, a full quiver is five. So just want you to know that. <laughs> you're almost there. No, no, you're, you're uh, four. You know, they can be four and there ain't no more. That, that could be your, your saying too. Uh, but indeed, they are uh, children, our heritage of the Lord. And they are from God. 
God is, um, you know, our children have asked us over, over the years, we have five, but our children have asked us, where did I come from? And we always told them, you came right from heaven. You know, but then when they grew up to be teenagers, we often wondered if that was true. Uh, we wonder if they came from somewhere else. But, uh, but the Bible does tell us very clearly here, children are given to us by God. And, but we as parents need to recognize something is that they're his. And I know sometimes we say they're mine. And yeah, because we raise them, we have that role. But ultimately, the fruit of the womb is his reward. And we have the honor and privilege of just having a part for a while, of raising our children for God and for his glory. And that's our prayer for you, that you'll be able to do that with wisdom and that God will give you guidance. And uh, so today they're here before our church, and we, they want to ask the Lord, uh, dedicate Jade, and we're going to ask the Lord's blessing upon this family. Amen? Amen. And ask God to help Pastor Miller and Sister Rachel to do their very best in raising their children for the Lord, and especially here this morning for Jade. Let's pray, and we'll ask God's blessing upon this family. Father, we come to you today asking that you would just help uh, Brother Miller, Sister Miller, to be uh, the parent you've called them to be. Give them wisdom. And uh, Lord, uh, we know that from your word that children are a heritage of the Lord, that they're given uh, by you and, and uh, for you. And so we pray that you would just help us to keep that in perspective as we raise our children, to constantly be pointing them to you as arrows are in the hand of that mighty man. Lord, help, uh, help uh, uh, you to be the target that we always point our children to. Lord, we know sometimes they fall short of that. But Lord, that's where often we have to display grace and mercy and those other wonderful attributes that you teach us. And so I pray that you would just, again, just give this family wisdom. Bless Jade as well, and we know you have a grand purpose for her life. And Lord, uh, for such a time as this, she's here in this, this time of the world, and uh, you have a purpose for her, so I pray that uh, Lord, uh, that you would just guide and direct her in her life. We pray for her salvation one day, that she'll recognize that she's a sinner in need of a Savior, and that she'll turn to you. And, and I, I'm certain that uh, Pastor and Sister Miller will teach her uh, what it means to be saved. But Lord, I pray that uh, the parent's faith will one day become uh, Jade's faith, and it'll be hers. And we'll thank you for all that you'll do. We love you so much. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you folks uh, go back down, I just want to take a moment. We, uh, Every time we have a baby dedication, we like to extend the family with a Bible. And uh, this one's called uh, Baby's First Bible. And uh, we put a little note in here, the date and time. Uh, but again, this is, she may already have a Bible, but this is just really a token of our love and appreciation, but more importantly, just as a reminder uh, to help her to learn it and to walk by it. And may she see that in you as well, that you are walking by God's word. And so let's give this family a hand. Amen, church. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I was going to hold her, but she doesn't, she's not used to me yet. She still, she cries when I hold her. So I don't want to do that this morning, make her cry. Amen. Uh, all right. We have our uh, boys here. Would you come on up here, boys? We're going to have our offering now. This is our coin offering, church, once again, going towards our 35th anniversary. And we are so thankful for all the Lord has done. And so every week we'll be having this change offering. And listen, we're helping the world, our country right now. There's a coin shortage. <laughs> so, someone said, you're having a coin offering in the middle of a coin, uh, coin shortage. I said, well, there's no better time. We're helping out. And we'll get, get this to the bank. And, uh, but, uh, again, just a way of, uh, of course, showing our love and appreciation for these families that will be with us in October. So let's ask the Lord's blessing upon this offering. Father, once again, I just pray that you just bless this time. Thank you for uh, how you provide for us, Lord, and just God's people, just always um, willing and uh, a part of what you're doing here. And God, we pray in advance that you'd bless our anniversary and these families that will be coming. I pray that we can just be a blessing and encouragement to them. Lord, we are so encouraged to see what you've done over these years. 
And uh, Lord, uh, just help us to continue to look to you and, uh, and that you continue to work in our midst. We'll thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, boys, you can go ahead. Let's stand once more and sing. There is a fountain.
when I say thanks for the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, for the things he has done with his blood. He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And if I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With His blood, He has saved me. With His power, For the things he has done. Thank you so much. Appreciate the music this morning. And uh, I'm going to ask at this time if you would please take your Bibles. We're going to join together in the book of Psalms in chapter 27. Psalms chapter 27. And uh, indeed, God deserves all the glory. Amen. Boy, that was good. I appreciate that today. God's so good to us. Even when we don't recognize it and we don't feel it, he still is. He's still good. I'm so grateful for that. Psalm 27, and this morning we're going to... Consider a uh, a subject that I think all it will speak to just about all of us because we all are called at times to wait. How many of you like waiting? Nobody likes waiting, right? Nobody likes waiting. It's funny uh, and interesting that as I was putting this message together, something interesting happened to me this week. Um, I went home uh, from church. I was working up here up at the church and went home for lunch and uh, was c- coming back. Now, I live on, on a dead-end street in Holyoke. And as I, as I was pulling back out, and I had to go somewhere. I was kind of under time constraints, so I was trying to get somewhere quickly. And at, I'm looking at the end of the street, and there's somebody in the middle of the street. And I figured, well, they're just waiting. Well, <clears throat> it seemed like they... When I pulled up closer, it seemed like they had parked right in the middle of the street. I'm thinking, who in the world parks in the middle of the street? You know, and it's probably somebody that, you know, they're they're probably thinking, I'll just go in the house real quick. Didn't want to take time to find a uh, parking space. But I'm thinking in my mind, like, you know, what's going on here? And I'm I'm waiting. It's like 30 seconds. Now it's a minute. And, uh. You know, the, the, a minute is the limit, you know. That's when the horn, it's like, okay, 
beep, you know, I saw, so I beeped and, and uh, 30 seconds later, no, nope, beep again. And now I'm like, it's like two minutes. This person's still in the middle of the street. And where are they? And uh, so now I'm kind of like the, the horn's getting longer. They're like, Bang, you know, and I'm laying on it. Like, where is this person? N- no kidding. Five minutes. I'm behind this person. I know. It seems like a lifetime, right? When you're behind some. I'm thinking, man, where is Who does this? Who parks in the middle of the street? Just leaves their car. They can't hear me. I mean, I'm laying on the horn. I'm, wah, wah, you know, and, uh, and, and then like literally over five minutes, then all of a sudden, the car just moves to the side. I'm like, they were in there the whole time? <laughs> now, let me just say something. I'm glad my wife wasn't with me. Because if my wife was with, with me, she would have said, don't you look at them. Don't look at them. <laughs> so I had all the freedom to give them the look. Do you, do you all have a look that you give people? All right, it's like, you know, you, whatever, that scowl, you know, it's like, that's what it was. It was like, what in the world? What are you doing? And uh, I couldn't believe it. I don't know what was happening. I don't know if it was sleeping or what was, was happening there. But, but boy, I'll tell you, I don't like to wait. I don't like to wait. Uh, it, you know, you go to Walmart, but... And sometimes those lines, oh, oh, why do they only have two registers open when there's 300 people in line? I mean, you've all been there, right? Those times you just call the wait, and it's like, I don't want to wait. Uh, but this, this morning, we're going to discuss this a little bit. You know, the Bible has so much to say about waiting. It's interesting when you start looking at your Bible, and I believe that's why, because we struggle with it. We, we, we don't like it. And so the Bible gives us some insight into waiting and what it means. So we're here in Psalm 120, uh, Psalm rather 27, Psalm 27. And if you're there, let's look down in verse 14. We'll begin here. We're going to look at some other places, but we'll begin here. Psalm 27, verse 14. Here it says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. For the next few moments, I want to preach you a message. And this is the encouraging part, is that God is working in your waiting. God is working in your waiting. In other words, waiting isn't just for the sake of waiting. And I'm so thankful that there is a purpose in it. And even in the midst of it, when it seems like we're, like life is just buffering, we're just on hold, that we're never at a point like that. No matter what's going, if, even if it seems like, well, everything time is just standing still or I want to be somewhere else or be doing something else, God is constantly at work. And there's never a time where God is not at work in your life. And, uh, but what do we do about it? What, you know, when it seems like we're waiting, what do we do while we're waiting? So I want to I give you some thoughts today on this, this subject. God is working in our waiting uh, but let's bow together once again, and we'll ask his blessing upon his word to our hearts. Father, we're once again just so thankful for your word that gives us guidance, and especially in this area where we struggle so often. Uh, just about every day, we're called to wait on something. Lord, sometimes those, uh, those waiting uh, times are short. Uh, other times, they're seasons. There are times that we're waiting on you, and times we grow discouraged because of it. We're anxious or worried. And uh, so, Lord, I just pray that you would just help us to consider this. And I imagine that there is there are some here in the room that are waiting, and waiting on various things. And, and God, I pray that uh, you would just speak to us today. And, and Lord, I also I pray if there's someone here without Christ or someone listening in without Christ that has uh, never come to the place in their life where they see uh, they're a sinner in need of a Savior, that today would be that day. You'll come to Christ and be saved. We'll thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've been thinking a lot about waiting lately, especially in light of uh, where we are in uh, our church life. You know, we've been waiting on a lot of things. We finally started up choir, but we're still waiting on uh, rolling out the buses. We're waiting on just kind of getting back to normal. 
Um, and it just seems like life has been on hold for a while when it comes to church life or even, you know, things at work maybe. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to go in stores without masks. We'll go anywhere without masks. Aren't you looking forward? I'm sick and tired of those masks. And, uh, and we're, we're waiting on that. We're waiting for vaccines to roll out. And I was thinking about this. You know, we're, there's people that are waiting to come back to church. Some have recently come back, and it's such a blessing to see them. But some are still waiting. And um, we have these, these seasons in life where we're called to wait, and it's never easy. It's never easy. Um, so what can we do in the meantime? Well, let me give you some thoughts about that. Um, the first thing we can do, and the Bible, again, talks so much about waiting. God wants us to know that waiting is not just a passive activity um, in which we do nothing. The Scripture teaches us that God wants us to actively be participate in, in uh, various things. But here's the first thing, is believe God. Believe God. And especially when you're praying. So believe in God is the first thing that we have to recognize when we're waiting. And one thing that we can do is just believe in God. And you say, well, it's hard to at times uh, believe in God or put my trust in God when I'm waiting. And um, why? Because we're tempted to fear. We're tempted to become anxious. And, um, and believing or trusting in God is, is uh, sometimes the furthest thing from our mind when we're waiting. The Bible, as we read here in Psalm 27, it says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And notice what happens when, we, when, we, when we're waiting on the Lord. It says, he shall strengthen my heart. You know, our heart is usually what we're struggling, is where we're struggling in times of waiting. It's, you know, heart is the place where, we're, where fear, um, you know, is trying to overwhelm us and, you know, becoming anxious. And so believing in God is, What we need to do is putting our trust the whole time while we're waiting is learning to trust God. And, you know, there are times I believe God would have us to wait just so we can learn how to trust God. Uh, Waiting is, is, again, it's not something that is just, um, you know, it's not just arbitrary. It's not just something that happens. No, uh, waiting has a purpose. Uh, I was thinking about Abraham and Sarah, how they had to wait all of those years for the promise of, uh, of Isaac. And, uh, you know, God had, I believe, a purpose in all of that, and of course, was to give them a son. You know, the promise was wrapped up in the son. But do you know that the, there was also a purpose in their waiting? They, you know, they were past the time of childbearing, and we know Sarah laughed, and even Abraham laughed about it when they, the angels came and told them they were going to have a child. You know, into their, they were into their 90s. That would make anybody laugh. <laughs> uh, why now? You know? Well, there's a reason why now. Because it was a miracle that God would perform. And they, they would understand something that waiting on God, um, that God always comes through, that God is, he is trustworthy. That we, in those times of waiting, we can still believe in God and his promises, even though we don't see it immediately or see it even for years. That if God says he will do something, he will do it. In other words, God wants us to trust in his resume. And what he's done in the past, he can do it again. And God will always accomplish what he says he, what he says and what he sets out to do. So while we're waiting... Let's not stop believing in God. Sometimes we give up because we don't see immediate results. And we're geared this way. In our day and age, we're all about immediate results. We're a result-driven society. You know, uh, that's what companies, and they, you know, they they know this about us. You know, we're, as consumers, we're, we, we love convenience, we love the immediate. When we're called to wait, we don't like it. <laughs> and it uh, goes against our, our nature. And so they, they often prey upon that. You know, the, well, you get immediate results. And, you know, by the way, have you ever noticed when you're trying to uh, lose weight, how you don't get immediate results? It's like 
I wish the scale was quicker. You know, it's like, what, what, what's, is this, the scale broken? It doesn't work right. It's not, you know, I've been eating right for, for weeks now. Why isn't this thing moving quicker? And uh, listen, results sometimes take a while. At least ones that, you know, would, will benefit us and, and matter, sometimes things are worth waiting for. And we, instead of growing impatient or developing a bitter, bitterness, um, during our times of waiting, especially when it comes to things that we're trusting God for or praying to God for, we need to learn how to be patient. You know, here's the thing about God. He doesn't always work in our time frame, does he? But know this about God. He's never early, he's never late, and he's always right on time. And he was for Abraham and Sarah, and he will be there for you. So the first thing is this, just believe God. Your time of waiting, your season of waiting, believe God. Uh, Something else we can understand about our time of waiting, let's go to Psalm in chapter 5. Here in Psalm, go to chapter 5, and let's look together in verse 3. Psalm 5, verse 3. I love this. The psalmist says this, Psalm 5, verse 3, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and notice this part, and will what? Look up. So what's that, what's that psalmist saying? He's making his prayer to God, but he's also looking up. He's waiting with expectancy. And that's something that you and I can do while we're waiting in our season of waiting is to watch with expectancy. Be prepared for God to work. Sometimes we lose sight of when we're praying, we actually don't look for the answers. Well, we pray, oh yeah, well, we're supposed to pray. Yeah, we're also supposed to look for answers and wait with expectancy for God to do something. Have you, have you stopped being expectant of God? Have you given up on expecting things from God? Maybe even given up on prayer altogether because you're not seeing immediate results. Listen, while we pray, he says, I will make my prayer, but then I'm also looking for God. Oh, uh, friend, uh, let's begin once again to look for God and wait with expectancy for answers to prayer. You know, your list of prayer requests that we have, there needs to be an open space for answers to prayer. There needs to be that that space where we're also waiting for answered prayer. And um, so wait with expectancy, looking to God. Look up to him. And don't don't get discouraged because you're not seeing immediate things happen in your life. Again, I know some of us are waiting for things. Some are waiting to come back to church. I mentioned that one. But what about some who are waiting for their health? Some, Some are waiting to get better. What a discouraging season it can be when you're having health issues. And, and boy, we know how the physical affects the spiritual. And, and they're so closely related that oftentimes discouragement sets in. You know, when you can't do what you used to do and you're just waiting to get better. I know some that are in that season right now, they're just waiting. Waiting to finally be able to do things because they can't do them any longer. Or how about this one? You're waiting or maybe an opportunity, maybe a job. I've been waiting for a job, something to open up that will just be better, will, will help you to meet the needs that you have for you, you or your family. And you're waiting on a, on a position or a job, and you prayed about these things. You're waiting on God. Oh, here's the third thing I want to encourage you with. You're there in Psalm, go to Psalm 130. The third thing is this, put your hope in his word. Put your hope in his word. Psalm 130, verses 5 and 6. Psalm 130, verses 5 and 6. The psalmist says this, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his word, so do I hope. That's a great verse that tells us that during those periods of waiting, what we can do while we're waiting Put our hope in his word. God, I not only believe in you, but I believe in what you've said. I believe in what you've given me. By the way, aren't you glad God has given us his word? He's given us his word that we carry with us. 
and that we can, we can memorize and we can meditate in. And it gives us direction for life. I believe God has given us uh, uh, um, help in our waiting. In Proverbs chapter 3 is, is a warning. You're there close. They're just neighbors here. Go to Proverbs chapter 3 and uh, look at in verses 5 and 6. Familiar verse. Um, <clears throat> speaking of hope, it says in verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So the Bible is telling us here not to trust or not to lean on our own understanding. And oftentimes this is what we do in periods of waiting. And and we begin to uh, just rely on our own experience or our own ability to get through seasons. And, you know, sometimes we just, we know God is there, but we're not really leaning on him. And there are many Christians that are living life this way. They know God is out there somewhere. And they know, you know, they know that he saved you. But usually that's when it comes to the day-to-day things, we're not really leaning on him. We're just kind of going through our lives, making our own way, leaning on our own experience and our own wisdom, never really seeking him for these things. The Bible tells us here that we can lean on him, trust in the Lord, and he, he'll direct us. God has guidance for your life and for mine. In fact, another psalm, in another psalm it says that he guides us with his eye. And also tells us in Proverbs that he lays up wisdom, sound wisdom for the righteous. God has guidance for you. you you're, listen, you, we don't have to do it all on our own. Aren't you glad for that? He's with us every step of the way. And so in those seasons of waiting, trust in the Lord and don't, or put your hope in the Lord. Don't put your hope in uh, other things that often we do. We put our hope in, you know, again, we're talking, uh, maybe you're hoping for, for a health change. And what do we do? We put hope in doctors and medicine. Maybe we're hoping for a job change and we put hope in, in companies and and, uh, and people, and I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes those things work out, but sometimes they don't. And oftentimes we get disappointed. But here's the thing, when we put our hope in God, we're never disappointed. He will never disappoint us. We'll never regret trusting in the Lord. Now, <clears throat> something else that we can do while we're waiting is to resist fretting, Refrain from anger and be still and know that he's God. Uh, And I think there's a passage that speaks to this um, more clear than others, and it's found in the Gospel of Matthew. If you would please turn there in the Gospel of Matthew. I know I'm having you turn uh, a lot this morning, but I want you to see these places today. Matthew chapter 6 is a wonderful passage about how God meets our needs in life. And so, again, when we're talking about praying for things and not seeing the immediate results, or not seeing God work as we would want Him to, let's be reminded of what God has said here in His Word. Let's go down to verse 25 if you're there. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Here the Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
and all these things shall be added unto you. And take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What is Jesus saying here? He's saying the things that we need in life, God knows we need them. God knows you, your needs. In fact, he knows your needs better than you know your needs. And he's going to meet them. He gives the comparison of how God takes care of the, the birds, the fowls of the air, and how they, they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into barns. In other words, they don't have to work for God to provide for them. No, God provides for them because he's creator. God cares for you and provides for you as well because we're his creation and even the crown of his creation. We're made in his image. He says, how much better are ye than they? And uh, then he gives the comparison about the daily needs. What shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I wear? All of these things that we work for every day of our lives. And, and God has, knows that we need these. In fact, he says here uh, how he can take care of us far greater. Um, he says, the lilies of the field. How beautiful is the lily? How beautifully arrayed. And yet God made that. And he says, I can clothe you as well. But I love this. He says, take therefore, or therefore take no thought. You know what he's saying there? He's saying, don't worry. Don't worry. You know, all of these questions, you know, what's going to happen? Is, is this not often what we do? We worry about the future, what's ahead, what, what's going to happen in the days ahead. And notice what Jesus said. He said, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Don't worry about the future. It's in God's hands. I can remember there was a, a time my, my family and I, uh, we were serving the Lord in Wareham, Massachusetts. We planted a church there years and years ago. Um, and uh, we were there for five years. And at the end of those five years, we saw our church that was growing in the beginning. And then uh, it was slowly diminishing. In fact, we ended up with just a handful of people after five years. And we sensed that the Lord was closing the door there. I didn't understand it. In fact, when we moved to Wareham, we had planned on dying there. I mean, we were spending our lives there. And then God closed the door there. And I'm going to be honest with you, uh, it was difficult. It was like shattered dreams, and we're like, what's going to happen? You know, what's, what's the next step? And so we began to pray, Lord, we, you know, where would you have us? And in my mind, well, there's another church somewhere. There's, there's, there's uh, another step, and it will be immediately. Well, it wasn't immediately. It was, you know, months, and months turned into a year, and, and uh, even beyond that, months, you know, a year and a few months, and during that time, I was working, I was doing plumbing, and, um, and I was, I kind of, in a sense there, kind of gave up on praying about ministry. I was coming to the conclusion that God was done with me, and that maybe I would just serve the Lord in a church somewhere, and I could be faithful there and, and be a plumber. So that's how I started looking. I started actually working toward my license, and I was this close to getting my license, I mean, back then it was only two years you had to work for a master plumber. Now I think it's four, but, but I was this close, and I got a phone call. And that phone call was from the previous pastor here, Pastor Tharp. And he had discussed about um, me coming to Kennedy because he and his family were leaving. And uh, that blew my mind. That blew my mind, and I, and I knew it. I knew I said, God, <laughs> boy, your timing is something else. I did not think in a million years that I would ever be here as pastor. I didn't, that was the first, it, we didn't pursue this. We didn't ask for this. In fact, I gave up on praying for it. I just thought, God, we'll serve you somewhere, but we're, we're going to have to trust you. And God opened up the door here for our, our, we and our family to come, for me and my family to come. We came, uh, well, it's been 15 years now that my family and I have been here, and, and uh, I think of that. I think of that period of waiting and how difficult it was in not knowing the future and struggling. 
And that hasn't been the only time. There's been other times we've waited and struggled. But I say that to say this. We can believe in God. We can trust in him. We can hope in him in those seasons of waiting. And when the future looks unclear and you begin to worry, and at times, you know, worry with all its brothers, anxiety and and fret, and even times anger and bitterness, you know, all of that comes with waiting. But I just want to encourage you here today to trust in the Lord. Be strong and take courage. Um, One last place I'd have you to turn, and and that's in Psalm uh, 37. Let's go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37 speaks to us about resisting and refraining from getting angry and giving up. Psalm uh, 37, and once you're there, if you would, please, let's look at verse 7 and 8. The Bible says here, rest in the Lord. Lord, that's, that's good advice. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospered in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Notice verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. So the Bible very clearly tells us here in that period of waiting to just rest in the Lord. Don't don't give in to to fret. Don't give in to anger. Don't give in to giving up on God. Listen, you just keep your eyes, keep trusting him. He'll bring it to pass. He'll bring it to pass. God knows where you are, friend. He knows this season of life you're in. He knows this season of waiting. And I know for some, some of you have given up on praying. You know, maybe, maybe you're waiting on a man. Maybe you're waiting on a, on a woman. You know, you, you're looking for somebody to get married to. Uh, you know, that's, that's a, a prayer. That's a prayer I know that many young people have, and you're just looking at the future, and you're thinking, boy, this is, uh, there's no future for me. Don't, don't quit praying. Uh, I could use somebody as an example here, but uh, I remember she was praying and praying for a right man, and God brought him into our church. And you never know who's going to walk through the doors. A single person here, you never know. You just never know. And I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, I was wondered that for my kids. I said, who in the world is going to take them, you know? <laughs> and uh, go out to California, and they, it was even one point I was like, I'm like waiting for my son to call me and say, hey, dad, I'm interested, you know, and let me know about some girl. And I never got that call. And I was growing concerned. I took a flight out there. It wasn't just for that, but I went out there to preach and uh, do chapel. But I said, I'm going to drive him around the campus, and I'm just going to point out girls. Like, what about this one? What about that one? What about this one? And we did that. He's like, dad, I got this. I got this. He was all upset about it. Uh, but I'm like, I was growing concerned. I'm like, I'm waiting here. Uh, but uh, I, I'm so glad God provided. God provided. And uh, you never know. And it, it, It's unexpected. But just I, I say that to say this. Don't give up while you're waiting. Trust in the Lord. Take courage today. He knows where you are. And, and, and listen, keep that space by your prayer list where you're expecting God to do things. And and while you're waiting, it's not just life on hold. God is working in your waiting. Let's bow together for prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Just these verses we read this morning are so encouraging because we can trust in you. We can hope in you in our times of waiting, even when it's unclear in the future. We have no idea what's in store. But God, help us not to run ahead of you. Help us not to grow worried and anxious. But Lord, help us to to, to just turn it over to you, to trust you. And I imagine there are all uh, situations here that are represented where we're wait, waiting, and seasons where we're waiting. And God, I just pray that our hearts have been encouraged today. Let's stand together, church, for just a moment. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. And at the end of our service, we always have a time of invitation, a time where uh, we're just 
we, we take time to talk with the Lord. And maybe God has spoken to you today, some area of your life. And maybe you're, you're struggling when it comes to this idea of waiting. And uh, maybe God has spoken to your heart today. Why don't you come? Just spend some time talking to him. It's really it's what it's all about, just, just praying. He said, my house is a house of prayer. And so maybe you'd like to come and just bring a burden, bring a care to him. God knows it already. We just take time to talk to him about it. Maybe your need this morning is to be saved. You've never come to the place in your life where you just put your trust in Christ and what he accomplished for us on that cross. As we sang this morning, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. That's speaking of the cross. And you're not saved. You say, Pastor, that's my need today. Would you please pray for me? I don't know if I die today. Heaven's my home. And I'm concerned about that. Would you please pray for me? No one's looking around, but might I pray for you? I'm not going to call you out or embarrass you, but I'll silently pray for you. Pastor, I don't know that I'm saying, please pray for me. Anyone, just slip your hand up, put it down. Anyone at all here today? All right. Let's just remain in prayer for another moment, church. Chorus is trust and obey. Let's sing that together. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Thank you for joining with us this morning. Uh, at the end of our service, we have our in-person giving and uh, there'll be an usher by the back door if you uh, choose to give that way with your tithes and offerings to support God's work here. You're welcome to do that. Others are choosing to give online and uh, or through the mail, but uh, thankful for God's people being faithful to his work. So this opportunity uh, for giving. Also, I just want to say before we leave to our guests, thank you for joining with us. We're so happy you've come today. Uh, and for all of us, I want to invite you back 6 p.m. this evening. We look forward to our evening service. Once again, an opportunity to meet together as God's people, fellowship, uh, and also uh, a message from his word. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask um, Pastor Aaron Booth, would you please dismiss us in a word of prayer? Patiently waiting for your will in our lives, Lord. I pray that we would trust and obey you each and every day. In the name of Christ, we pray.